breaking news at this hour. I just found out my wife has been cheating on me with the TV repairman. And in other breaking news, I just found out my TV is broken. But in the most breakingest of news, the demonstration outside the courthouse turned violent earlier today. When protesters pulled hair, pinched each other, and Indian rug burn totals were in the hundreds. Stop! What's happened to us? Look at yourselves. Look at what we've become. This used to be a peaceful demonstration. We used to get along. Joey, when you were depressed because your inability to understand the proper use of a comma, who was there to help you rewrite your suicide note? It was Cheryl, wasn't it? Joey's not here. And Squeamish Rick, what about you? When you weren't up to the task, who was there every day to change out your horse catheters? It was Tommy and Wendy. When your husband got sick, who came to your house at 6.30 every morning to change out your horse catheters? Again, it was Tommy. So I beg you, can't we all just get along? Please, this is no way to behave on Dougie's birthday. Did you just break into my car and steal my megaphone? Dougie, come on, I would never do that to you. My car got broken into too. Someone stole my bicycle helmet. Miss Oswego, are you aware that I'm a high-powered celebrity attorney? I don't really watch a lot of TV. Well, as the famous saying goes, It is better to offer no excuse than a bad one. Oh my god, it's uncanny. He sounds just like George Washington. Are you aware that I have represented the likes of Matt Dillon, the guy from Pawn Stars, and Dander Frim? No, sir. How else would I know that Matt Dillon once got caught buying alcohol for minors? He thought they looked like they could use a drink after a long, hard day in the coal mines because that's the kind of guy he is. He didn't care if they were only 16. Shh. Attorney-client confidentiality. Hey, I'm just a public official appointed to decide cases in a court of law. I'm not here to judge. Do you find me to be an amiable man, Miss Oswego? Amiable? Likeable, Miss Oswego. Oh, yes. You're very charming. Very charming, she says. Please read that back to the court, if you would, please. I hope you're going somewhere with this counsel. Judge, you worry too much. I'll allow it. Please read what you have. He looked down at the cat hair embedded in the mayonnaise stain on her sweatpants, then sharply looked back at her. His hair tussled and turled across his face like silky tendrils masking his wild eyes. Eyes that stared back at her like dagger-shaped spears with daggers on the end of them. What's happening? Where's the part where I'm charming, Miss Stenographer? Stenographer? No, I was just looking for a nice, quiet place to work on my novel. It's about a muscular con man who woos and makes love to a down-on-her-luck novelist in her mid-forties who likes to write novels in courtrooms. I hold you in contempt of this court. One day in jail. Is that all you got? You want more? Yes. I sentence you to death. Get her out of my sight and euthanize those cats. Of course, the death penalty. It's the perfect ending to my novel. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. You were telling the court that I was handsome and charming. I didn't say handsome. Objection, your honor. Overruled. Well, you are right about one thing, Miss Oswego. I am charming, and it shows in all of my accomplishments. How else would I know that the guy from Pawn Stars once stole his cousin's real doll? I knew it. Attorney-client confidentiality. Get to the point, Mr. Hectomy. There you have it. In Miss Oswego's own words, I am very charming. Let that sink in. No further questions, Your Honor. You are the boy's mother, are you not? No, ma'am. His mama passed. I'm his granny. And how did she pass? It was a self-inflicted accident with a t-shirt cannon. I was unaware you could die from that. This one had a bayonet. And what about Jameson's father? He drowned. And how did that happen? In the ocean. Said he was going to swim out and touch the horizon. He only made it halfway. That must be hard. I have three of my own, I think. I don't know what they would do if anything should ever happen to me. Oh, you poor dear. Would you say that Jameson had a good childhood? Oh, yes. We live on a crouton farm, and he's always had plenty of room to run around and play. 
but mostly he just watched TV. And would you say that he was a bright boy? Jameson was so smart. He even knew how to work the stove and everything. You hear that? Jameson even knew how to work the stove and everything. Let that sink in. And it says, vote for me or I'll kill you. Mac, that's not going to get me elected class president. People are going to think I'm a sociopath. Nope. They're going to think he's a sociopath. (laughs) I spent all morning putting these up around school. I didn't want to win this way, Mac. What's the big deal? It was my idea for you to run in the first place. Come on, old buddy, old pal. You worry too much. (laughs) 